Hey everybody, welcome back. So this video will be a demonstration of how to use our class outline to make uh, a speech using Monroe's Motivated Sequence. As I mentioned before in the video that dealt specifically with Monroe's, which if you've not watched that, stop this one, go watch that one, then come back to this one. It'll make much more sense. Um, we talked about how your attention step, which is the first part of Monroe's, will be your attention getter. Uh, matter of fact, let me just show you the outline here. Um, so there is the attention getter. That will be your attention step. Then as you move to the body, main point one will become, and I'm just going to put these in in parentheses. I don't want you to use labels to call this like the need, but just for clarity, this will be the need. Actually, let me put it on the other side. That way it's not confused with um, being part of the actual label. So main point one will be the need. Main point two will be the satisfaction. Again, you could call that problem solution if you'd like. And main point three will be visualization. And then last, down at the very end, where you've got your closure, you can do your call to action either just before or just after the closure. So we'll put that here. So that'll be the only new thing to add to this outline, period. And you will have uh, your setup ready for Monroe's Motivated Sequence. Now, if I were you, uh, what I would do and what I have done here is pulled up our informative outline um, because I'm going to be able to use quite a bit of this in order to make this new persuasive speech. There's obviously differences in that it's persuasive, that it uses Monroe's, that it's trying to not just inform, but get the audience to agree with you on something. But, um, you know, it is something that is useful because we're going to be able to find the sources, some general information. We might use some similar uh, content in terms of the attention getter. Now, I'll come up with a new one here, but, um, you know, if you have a good story that you've used, you might want to reuse that. If you used uh, questions only, I would, I would advise you to strengthen your attention getter. Remember, the attention getter is the first of five required steps. And if you don't hit every one of those steps and do so effectively, your speech is not going to be as persuasive, as useful, as effective um, as it could be. So, Let's jump back over now and we'll come up and just put our labels in here. So this is our class sample. Our topic is stand up comedy as public speaking. Um, and of course we're doing persuasion with Monroe's motivated sequence. So Let's just jump in. So the, the attention getter here, I like to use, as I mentioned in the last video, stories for persuasive speeches. Um, and there's there's tons of different ways you could go about this. Again, go back, watch the other videos on attention getters in general, and you'll get some more ideas. But, um, you know, there's the only thing you can't do is make up a story and, you, and then pretend that it's true. It's about you or someone you know. So I will uh, actually use a real story, and no, I'm not a stand-up comedian, but I am the um, faculty advisor for the stand-up comedy club at Grand Valley. We have one, and so I will start with a story about that. Uh, so I will say, um, for the past six years, um, I have been the director of the GV speech lab. I'm just going to put GVSL again, uh, real quick on this too. If you are writing a story, coming up with a story, it's a good idea for you to write it all the way out so that you can get a feel for how much time it will take for me. I'm going to do some abbreviation. You can do that, but what I need to, to advise you are two things. One, make sure that there's enough content there. So when I grade your outline, I can actually, you know, see what you're trying to do, and then I can give you more feedback and useful feedback. And two, make sure that um, you've practiced this for time and that you're not going to, you know, be varying in how you deliver this story, you know, for, you know, 60 seconds of variation that can really put you in trouble with the time limit. So 
I'll talk about this um, public speaking since senior year of high school. Um, at work and a new opportunity presented itself. Stand up comedy. Okay, so basic stuff, Carl. Um, stand up comedy as public speaking. I do believe that it is a form of public speaking, so I'm going to say here. Now, pay, stay with me on this one, right? So instead of by this speech, you should know more about, you should be more informed on, you should have a better understanding of. We don't want that here. We don't want to beat around the bush either. We want to be direct. By the end of this speech, you should agree with me that stand-up, I know I'm just going to abbreviate now, stand-up comedy is a form of public speaking. Now remember, just like before, the thesis statement will come last, so don't try to do this too soon. Um, but the relevance here, now why would an audience like you care about uh, this particular persuasive message? Well, I needed two reasons, right? So one, um, you should care about this topic because you are all enrolled in a public speaking course. And two, you are students at Grand Valley and are eligible to join the Stand Up Comedy Club. Great. So, again, here we're not going to say, first, I'm going to tell you the problem. Second, I'm going to tell you the solution. Then I'll tell you the visualization. Don't, don't, don't do that, please. Um, so, instead, we are going to, to lay out these main points with labels, phrases, maybe brief sentences. But we're not going to use the terms need satisfaction, visualization. So let's say um, I'm going to infer, right? The problem is that uh, there's some disrespect for stand-up comedy from the public speaking community. I'll talk about what that might look like. Then I will talk about the solution, but not in that way. Um, I will... Let's talk about change curriculum to um, uh, acknowledge. That's what I'm looking for. Acknowledge. Whoops. I know there's a C. So acknowledge um, stand-up comedy as public speaking. And then the visualization when all this is done... Um, how it will provide, I want to say, more opportunity and um, creative outlets for students. Okay, so un, uh, or unchanged from before, remember. To begin, um, let's discuss... Um, how some in the public speaking community view stand-up comedy. Let's see what's wrong with this here. Nope, nothing. Okay. We'll come back to that. I'm going to go ahead and fill in some of these transitions and labels. So now that you see how some feel about stand-up comedy... We can move on to a, a new approach to changing the curriculum uh, to, um, let's say, give the proper respect to stand-up comedy. Okay, and so there, let me go ahead and put the need in here. Um, stand-up comedy is disrespected. Um, so here, my plan to fix that is to change the 
curriculum at GV, well, let's say in GV's School of Communications. And now, now that you see how stand-up comedy is disrespected by some and how we can, uh, how we can achieve um, a new appreciation for, whoops. Appreciation for stand-up comedy. Let's look at how this will benefit students. And then we're going to go here and we're going to talk about, um, we don't want to just call it the benefits, but we, we want to talk about um, respect for stand-up comedy results in... Um, improvements for students okay come down here remember just like before on the first speech work smart not hard you've already done most of this work so take it um so we had the statement of purpose by the end of this speech you should agree let's just grab this one there was a couple folks on the last speech who when they got here I think they just copied and pasted everything like you saw me almost do. Uh, but remember here, it's after hearing this speech because you're at the end. You don't want to say by the end of this speech because now that's where we are. So after hearing this speech, you should agree with me that stand-up comedy is a form of public speaking. Um, we'll come back to the central idea. Let's grab these main points and insert them here. Closure. Um, so I'll finish my story. Um, asked to be stand up comedy club um, faculty advisor. Um, deep respect and appreciation for stand up comedy. Um, back on campus for. Um, a much needed laugh. Then my call to action will be um, to <laughs> basically contact me. Um, contact me, Carl Brown, at uh, Carl Brown at gvsu.edu, which by the way actually does work. You can do Brown CA1 or Carl Brown at gvsu.edu. I don't know why they don't just use that one, but whatever. Um, contact me Carbon, to um, join the club today or to find out about our next meeting. I'll go ahead and tell you right off the top, I don't know when the next meeting will be because um, we've been fairly inactive since pandemic. But again, everything's supposed to go back to normal, no, more like normal in the fall. So um, we'll be back then if you're interested. Okay, so we've, look at that. I mean, we're moving quick. We've got this thing just really rolling here. Um, and so now we just need to talk about how stand-up comedy is disrespected. Now, again, listen to me on this, please. Work smart, not hard. You do not have to cite everything. If you are finding some information, you can then what we call draw an inference about other information from that information that you found, right? So if we go over here and we see that, um, you know, there is this idea that Egypt began public speaking, then it moved to the Greeks and Romans. And that comes from this journal article. Well, now we have to have two of those. Why find two new ones when I can keep this one? Because I think it's going to work just fine. Um, I can talk about how um, this, you know, is it, public speaking is this age old study that seems very separated from like stand up comedy, for example. So I am simply going to grab this and copy it. So I'm going to come over here 
and I'm going to say um, main point one is the stand-up comedy is disrespected, so my division A is going to be something like um, shorter history with less scholarship than public speaking. And so I'm going to put a one and I'm going to paste, right? So there is, let me just move this back so we can get stuff on the same line. Should have been real handy to do before now. <laughs> That's all right. Okay. Two, um, less scholarship than public speaking. Let's, let's do a quick little search here. Go over here, um, college courses on stand up comedy. Let's see what we can find. Top 10 colleges for aspiring comedians, huh? Wow, these aren't hard to get into. Um, no, they're really, that, that one is. Harvard, huh? Yeah. I, did you know most of the staff writers for SNL went to Harvard? Columbia is number one. Okay. Well, um, hmm. Let's think for just a second. Let me read why they think this is the best one. Is it four It's two classes. Fully enrolled classes. The only way to get into his fully enrolled classes is to track him down on campus and beg for a spot. Okay. Comedy and humor classes. So there are some schools that do offer this. We can see that. Slot over here. College Magazine. I don't love that source, but it's probably good. Um, UDEM. What is this? Yeah, no. You're going to take a college course for 15 bucks, don't you wish? Let's see what else. Reddit, San Francisco Comedy College. Okay. New York Times, could a college degree in comedy be anything other than what? A joke. Let's see what this says. Um, you can't teach it to them. Uh, let's see. They offer a BFA in comedic arts. Um, required course for anyone before to graduate to be a fan. The first such program in the nation. Okay, good. Good, 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 good. Bachelor of Fine Arts in Comedy. Comedic Arts. I like that. So, we're going to do this. I'm going to copy. I'm going to come over. We're going to paste. Not there, though. Just kidding. How about here? That's better. Blah, blah. Come on. Why can't I change the destination formatting? Hmm. Let's try something else. Okay. Render the existing list. Well, we'll just manually do it here. Boom, boom. All right, it's not perfect, but it's going to be fine for us. And let's see. This is from the New York Times in 2016. New York Times Magazine in 2016. Now remember, that's all you need, right? You don't need this, the author's name and all that. New York Times Magazine. 2016. Good. We'll come back and do our colorful stuff in just a few minutes. Now, Division B. So, uh, we need to problematize this in a, in a unique way. So, when we say that there's disrespect from people who are, you know, like rhetoricians, um, we need to make sure that we're able to, to say why that's a problem. And I think we could say that it is because you can't really, I mean, until this Emerson program, apparently, um, 
you couldn't major in this. Um, very few options for those in college seeking um, to become comedians. And I still can't spell. I blame West Virginia Public Schools K through 12, baby. Um, so we'll come back here. And so then we'll put in respect equals, and I'll elaborate in the speech, um, degree options. Uh, and then disrespect equals no degree options. But more than that, we even need to think about minors and individual courses. Okay. Good. And let's also say We'll go with one more. We'll do a three here. Three. Oh, I hate when they don't line up, but what are you going to do? Um, three. We are going to say um, location, location, location. More on that in just a minute. I'm not going to put any sub points there. Oh, good. Thank you. Okay, we'll come back and do our divisions in just a minute. So we're going to change the curriculum or the curricula here at Grand Valley. And we are going to uh, go through our steps now. Remember, if you would prefer, instead of having all these divisions here, you can make a list and these would be considered your steps. So we want to create, um, I'm going to say a survey for students um, to gauge interest. Then we're going to create a proposal for um, a stand-up comedy course. Um, three, we are going to defend the proposal in front of the university curriculum committee. I know you don't know this process, but I've actually gone through it before for a different course. Um, so that's why I'm just kind of popping through here. Um, and then once that happens, we need to, um, recruit, uh, students. We need to, well, I guess before we recruit students, we actually would need to create course materials and then recruit students. Okay. We don't need to really go through much there unless we can find a quick and easy um, list that's similar to that from the GV website. GVSU um, adding a new course to curriculum. Don't know that there'll be anything. Curriculum, let's see. Oh, it's a PDF. Great. How to propose a course or sequence. It's the Frederick Myers Honor College, but that'll be fun. We could even do it through there if we wanted to. Um, distinguishing features of the Honors College. Okay, right. Developing a proposal. And a proposed syllabus has to be with that. Okay. So, let's do... Create a proposal, create syllabus, create, um, call it demo syllabus. Good. Defend, create course materials, recruit students. And we can say that this is from gvsu.edu slash, what is it? Honor. We don't need to get the whole thing on there. Um, some people, I think I noted that you had sort of a, like too broad of a, um, a um, citation. You know, it was just sort of like, according to gvsu.edu, this is, and it was very specific. Just get it down a little bit more like from the Honors College. Also, note down here, the last page modified on 2021. 
that's the date that you need to include. So um, you could even say last updated 2021. Great. Let me just throw a color on this one so that we don't forget that it's there. Okay, now we need to think about the benefits um, of this. Let me jump back over and see what if there's anything over here that we can grab and use. Um, modern stand-up began in the 1900s and was inspired by comic writers. Okay, so we're going to use this. Um... We're going to use all of this. Well, we're going to at least use these two. So let's copy that. Let's bring it over. I don't know how this is going to work with doubling up on A's and B's, but we'll make it work. Okay, so I'm not going to just leave it like this. I'm going to move that down, actually, so that we can play with it on a clean page. Let's go down here. So I'll say A is when this happens, when, when we give this respect, and let's go back up to our problem. Um, there's a shorter history with less scholarship. So um, creating the, this class um, can lead to new major or let's not say lead to can open the door for more stand-up comedy <laughs> scholarship. Wow. Scholarship. And that will result in respect um, for the craft. B. What was that one up here? It was... Very few options for those. Okay, so now it will provide more options for students. Oh, wow. I'm telling you, it's Friday. I don't know what it is when you're watching this, but it's Friday here and it is showing. So I don't know when they do little A for letters. Anyway, provide more options for students. Um, those who seek to become comedians, um, those who are interested in the area, and those who are comm majors um, and want a new, refreshing look at public speaking. And then, location, location, location. Um, what I will say there is simply um, the college campus um, brings um, legitimacy to topics discussed. Okay, so here what I will simply say is... Um, that this is a legitimate topic. And so I want to get this stuff here. This will matter of fact, let's just do it like this. And let's say a one. And a two. And we're going to cut this. those will go with C. I'll show you how that'll look in just a moment. So we've got Forbes, we've got Britannica 2010, uh, we've got the Honors College website, we have One Journal, we have New York's New York Times Magazine, let's make that something. Um, and we also, we need one more journal article. So let's see. Oh, quit. oh well, I'm not going to worry about it. 
Let's see what else we can find here. Um, okay. Options in college, it seems like the way to go. So let's jump back over to our search. Um, let's go to GVSU. Oh, we're already here, really. Let's just go up here. Um, and then we will go to the library, which is there. We want to go to databases. Again, If I'm, I'm going to breeze through here, but you can go back and refresh your memory. But academic search, search ultimate is, I think, the way to go. Uh, we did a whole video on this, though, where we just found sources. Don't forget about that one. It also had the chart with the media sources and all that. So let's just see what we find up find here with stand-up comedy and how many hits we're going to get 41,574 good now let's limit that down sorry I've got a something in my eye there okay um, we want references available we also want it of course to be scholarly and peer-reviewed now let's see what we've got 2,492 yeah so English language stand-up comedy negotiating race and stand-up comedy now let's narrow it down college oops it's not what I meant to do We're down to 977 and then let's do courses 800 stand up comedy and pedagogy that might be useful let's see what it says central argument of this paper is that adopting some of the techniques practiced by stand up comedians can help teachers in higher education challenge students in ways that will ultimately improve student learning experience overall um and now we need to know if it worked for them or not. So let's grab it, take a quick look. Sometimes you can get it from just the um, um, abstract, but not always. So let's go down. What is a performance objective? I'm trying to find the results section if they've got it labeled as such. Uh, I don't think they do. No, well, the, we realize that at least first, many students might be ag uh, aggrieved by the strategies we have suggested. Staff might also be offended. Really, considering to, well, work smart, not hard. Work smart, not hard. Let's jump back. We don't have to say that they found out that it works. What we have to do is say. Um, an article from Innovations in Education and Teaching International, 2008, um, scholars argued that uh, adopting some of the techniques, uh, education situations, improving student learning. Okay, perfect. Now, copy that. Go over here. And... Propose a stand up comedy course. We're going to say um, include uh, academic material, specifically include oops, that. Technology is great and terrible, isn't it? So we'll grab that. And then we want to cite this. Let's take this guy out because we're not going to use it. Put the citation here. And that came from Innovations in Education and Teaching International. Innovations for Education and Teaching International. And that is from 2000, and does it say 18? Eight, okay. 
2008. And I'm going to add in the journal of that'll make my citation clear that this is in fact a peer reviewed journal article, which it is. Um, sure. Let's just throw some yellow on there. All right. We're almost done. Um, we need our thesis statement still, and then we'll see how this thing will flow. So, um, I think be, be very direct, right? Stand up comedy is in fact a form of public speaking. That's what we argue. Um, and so let's just go with it. Review central idea. As you can now see, stand-up comedy is, in fact, a form of public speaking. All right. Let's see what this looks like. All right. Um, let me save it. And I'll post this online, of course. But let's do our quick practice run to make sure that this is going to flow and it's going to work with time. I'm going to get my timer ready. Okay. Bum, bum, bum. And let's go. For the past six years, I've been fortunate. Okay, so what has occurred here is that I did a recording of me delivering the speech to you, and I found that it was too long. So you may find the same thing. What you'll need to do then is come back in and cut. So we were at eight and a half minutes. Uh, and there was also one element that needs to change, and that's the thesis, because it's too similar to the statement of purpose. Um, so we've changed that. We're going to change that to stand-up comedy should be taught in the... Um, college classroom. Now we got to figure out what else we can change. This speech is five to seven minutes long. So we need to whittle some things down. This is pretty, I mean, required, right? So we don't need to get into a, a lot of this maybe. Okay. I'm going to cut out this location, location, location. What I was going to say there is that, um, you know, comedy, stand-up comedy is often in nightclubs. When we think of speaking, we think of orators and politicians, more, for some reason, respected politicians than stand-up comics. Um, but we'll, we'll leave that out. We'll also then pull it from um, the visualization. Maybe... It was in there somewhere, but that's all right. We're going to just shorten this up and let's do this. Could also be that I just need to be a little quicker with my delivery. Okay, let's try this again, shall we? I know you didn't see the first one, but there's no point because it needed to change and it was just long. So let's try for this demo. Remember, five to seven minutes. For the past six years, I have been the director of the Grand Valley Speech Lab. Public speaking is something I've been interested in and worked at since my senior year in high school. And just last year, I had a new opportunity present itself uh, in terms of an area that I am very fond of, which is stand-up comedy. And the person who gave me this opportunity said, you're the, st you're the speech person here at Grand Valley. This should work for you too. Hi, my name's Carl, and today I want to tell you about stand-up comedy as public speaking. By the end of this speech, you should agree with me that stand-up comedy is, in fact, a form of public speaking. Stand-up comedy should be taught in the college classroom. You should care about this because, on one hand, you're all enrolled in a public speaking course, and on the other hand, you're all students at Grand Valley and are eligible to take this course or even join the stand-up comedy club, which you may not know that we have. Today, I want to discuss three main points. First, I'll talk about how some in the public speaking community look down on stand-up comedy. Second, we'll talk about how we can change the curriculum to start changing that respect level. And third, we'll talk about more opportunities and outlets for students. 
So to begin, let's talk about how some look down on uh, stand-up comedy. When we think about public speaking, we think about rhetoric, and we know that Rhetoric has been studied for a long time. In, in, in fact, Rhetorica, a jur- journal of the history of rhetoric from 1983, said that Egypt was the beginning. Ancient Egypt was the beginning of rhetorical studies. And of course, that continued through the Romans and the Greeks. Now, when you think about education and stand up, Emerson College is, as far as we know, the only program, the only institution in the country that offers a program in comedic arts. And that's according to the New York Times in 2016. So even if there are others, there's not many. What this brings us to is that there are few options for those seeking to become comedians. Um, You know, it's easy if you want to be a biologist to take biology classes. But if you want to be a comedian, there aren't any comedy classes. So what we'll do here is we see that there is a lack of respect because there's a lack of options for studying this particular area. When there aren't these majors, for example, we see that something may not be legitimate. Not only are there no majors for comedy, there are no minors and there's no individual courses available. So how can we deal with this? Well, now that you see how this disrespect is real, we can move on to talk about changing the curriculum to end the disrespect. The first thing we should do is to create a survey for students. We need to know if they're interested, assuming they are. The next step is to create a demo syllabus, what a class might look like for a full semester. Uh, According to the Honors College webpage at Grand Valley, uh, last updated on 2021 earlier this year, they tell us that a demo syllabus is required to make any proposal for curriculum change, adding a new course. So we'll want to do that and make sure that it includes academic information, academic material that these folks will want to see. Um, In fact, we could even cite the Journal of Innovations for Education and Teaching International from 2008, where uh, two scholars argued that, quote, adopting some of the techniques practiced by stand-up comedians can help teachers in higher education challenge students in ways that will ultimately improve the student learning experience overall. So we can show them that there is value to studying comedy, even if it's for education majors who want to become teachers, not just those who maybe want actual stand-up comedy experience um, or, or something similar to that. So after we create the proposal, our fourth step will be to defend it in front of the university curriculum committee who must approve it. Um, assuming they do, we can create new course materials, finding readings, videos, etc., uh, and then we can start recruiting students to join that class. So we see that disrespect is real when it comes to public speaking, looking down on some stand-up comedy, and we now have a plan on how we can get a class, at least one course, on stand-up comedy into the Grand Valley curriculum. So we can move now and finally talk about how this will all benefit students. And there are a few different ways. So first of all, creating this class can open the door for more stand-up comedy scholarship. This is a general statement. And as I mentioned before, the more scholarship um, areas to study on a particular topic, the more legitimized it becomes. And so that's what we can do for stand-up comedy by offering this course. What about our students, though? They'll benefit from this course in at least three ways. First of all, those who want to become comedians are going to have the clearest benefit. Those who are interested in this area, maybe it's to, um, you know, add in some of those comedic behaviors into maybe a teaching job or a management job so that they can better communicate with other people. They might be interested in this. And finally, the communication studies majors who, you know, those are my people. They need something new and fresh when it comes to public speaking. It's not enough to take uh, COM 201, story making, and and those sorts of courses, which have become mundane. We need something new. Finally, this will benefit the whole idea of college campuses bringing new information, new areas uh, to be studied so that people can really understand them. And according to Britannica from 2010, modern stand-up is based on things like Mark Twain's writings and vaudeville shows. Well, guess what? There are courses on both those individual topics available. Uh, Also, some may say that 
studying stand-up comedy is a waste when you think of a career because it's not going to lead you to much success. Well, to them, I would say in 2019, according to Forbes, stand-up comedian Kevin Hart pulled in $50 million. So if you find me a STEM job that can do that, um, and I will stand down and withdraw my proposal. But after hearing this speech, you should agree with me that stand-up comedy is in fact a form of public speaking. Uh, stand-up comedy should be taught in the classroom. It's plain and simple. Today we discussed that some look down on stand-up comedy. We can change a curriculum to include a course on stand-up comedy, which will change that disrespect, and that will lead to more opportunities and creative outlets for our students. So at the beginning, I told you that I had this new opportunity, and if you haven't guessed, it was to become the faculty advisor of the Stand-Up Comedy Club on campus. This is an area that I've often you know, admired. I love watching stand-up, so I jumped at the chance to do this. If you're interested in this topic as well, contact me, Carl Brown, at carlbrown at gvsu.edu, and you can join our club today. It's a legit student-run organization, and if nothing else, find out about our next meeting and see for yourself how studying stand-up comedy can not only change you for the better, but your whole college experience. Okay, so that was 7.30, but then I got to take off 10 seconds to get in my phone. I'm still at 7.20, man. I got to cut some more out of here. So, you know, if this happens to you, what can you do? I mean, there's no right or wrong way um, to do this. I don't know that we need this information. We can just say that we're going to create a proposal, and that's part of that proposal. Um, that's going to take off at least 15 seconds, I would think. And then those who are interested in the area, I'm going to take that out too. With that, I feel confident we could get it down to seven minutes um, and not have to make any more changes. So I'm going to leave it there. I won't go through it again. Um, but I will, I will let you know, practice, practice, practice for time. Uh, again, with a recorded speech, there shouldn't be an excuse for not hitting that time range, right? I mean, if you don't hit it, do what I just did. Go back, cut things out, change it. You may have to do it three or four times, but it'll be worth it to save, you know, all the valuable points you can get. Um, so, so do yourself a favor and do that. All right. I will save this. I don't know what time we started, but I know it was less than an hour to get us through that once again. Um, and so again, it might take you a little longer because this is new to you, but don't work, you know, like mad on this. I mean, I want you to do a good job, put the effort in, get the grade that you want, but don't feel like this is something that should take weeks to do. So keep that in mind as you prepare for Monroe's motivated sequence. We'll have more on that soon when we talk about the next week's, um, lecture with persuasion specifically, and then we'll, of course, incorporate Monroe's. So I hope this is helpful. I will post it online now. If you're watching this on Friday or at some point over the weekend, have a good weekend. If not, I will have a new video out for you soon. As always, if you need anything from me related to the class or if you have questions related to the class, let me know. Thank you.